Well, firstly, we already by then had broadcasting facilities from a number of African countries. We used to broadcast from Angola, from as African countries nearer South Africa became independent, they would give us broadcasting facilities. So we were already broadcasting that way. The anti-apartheid movement, the African countries set up the equivalent of anti-apartheid movements. And it was now a global phenomenon. But London became one of the major places because you had a lot of international journalists there, radio stations and so on. So we were producing illegal material for inside the country. Some of it was produced in other African countries, but it was the major channel and it had to be got into the country. We were also broadcasting from these stations. Major statements were coming out through London because of its facilities. At that time, initially there was a tremendous concern that only Lusaka could speak. And we tried to explain that it wouldn't work because coming out of Lusaka would take time. And you had to re react immediately. So a committee was set up in London. Uh, we had uh, Mendy Msimang as the chief representative. He became our first high commissioner after 94. And I suppose he had the trust in some of us to agree that we could speak without waiting for Lusaka. Oliver Tambo had a lot to do with that as well. And so, for example, when, uh, well, we got into the British media, we got into the international media. They knew they could come to us to ask us. Very often when journalists were going back to South Africa, they would see us, or were going to be based in South Africa, they would meet with the London group, media group, and we would put them in touch with people or brief them and say, if you speak to so-and-so, this is what. So we also had to trust and built up a group of international journalists whom we could trust to speak to somebody at home and who would report accurately. So this was the sort of thing. But uh, we'd reached a stage when we got a lot of information out of South Africa. For example, I was the head of research uh, and we were monitoring very closely what was going on. One way or another, we used to get publications in. We used to, for example, a lot of stickers that you would appear had been actually produced overseas. The anti-apartheid movements, for example, the Dutch anti-apartheid movement, was putting leaflets into goods that were being exported to South Africa on the idea that when people, the people who would unpack them would obviously be Africans, and so this would distri distribute it. So all of this was being done through different, we had offices, we had more offices than the South African government had embassies at the time we were unbanned.